Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we can use the Casio FX991ES Plus calculator to help us work out probabilities for the normal distribution. It saves us having to use tables. And what I'll be looking at is this particular function, P of Z, for a standardized normal distribution. It works out the probability of being less than a given Z value. We'll also be looking at this function, Q of Z, which gives you the probability between zero and any Z value. And we'll be looking at this function, RZ, where on the calculator it gives you the probability of being more than a particular Z value. So let's start with the first one where we're going to look at finding the probability of being less than 1.2. Remember Z represents the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. So how do we go about working out then the probability that Z is less than 1.2? Well, what we need to do is make sure that our calculator is in statistics mode. And to do that, what we do is we go on to the mode function here, and you'll see that we've got the stats mode three here. So if we just hit three, it brings up this screen here. We don't want to use this, so we just clear it, but you can see the calculator's now in stats mode. And to bring up these functions here. What we do next is we go on to shift and then press this button here, the stats function. And you'll see that we've got this new menu and we just choose number five for distribution. And so if we press five there, you start to see these functions P, Q and R. I'm not going to be talking to you in this video about this function here for. But uh, let's start then with the P1. So all we need to do is enter 1 and enter now 1.2. So if we put 1.2 in here, close the bracket off and when we press equals, there we go, 0.88493. So this is the same then as working out P of 1.2 on this calculator. And as you can see, it comes out at 0.88493. And you can see that if we were shading half of this graph, remember that all of the area shaded if it were shaded comes to one and you can see that this looks reasonable okay we're to the right of the zero here so therefore it's going to be more than 0.5 now this works as well even if you've got this on the other side so for instance suppose we had this one negative 1.2 Z was negative 0.12 and we wanted to work out the probability that Z was less than minus 1.2. Well, we could use this result here actually. By symmetry, we could take this away from one. It would give us this white area here and then this white area here by symmetry would be the same as this area here. But I'm going to use the function here. It works just the same. I can either go back into the stats mode and select one, or I could even use the keypad here by just going backwards into here and then putting a minus in front of it. Pressing equals gives me 0 0.11507 which would be the result if I did one minus this value. Okay, so this is exactly the same then as working out P of minus 1.2. So it works, in other words, on the other side of zero, and we get 0 
zero seven. Okay. Now I want to demonstrate this function qz now. So let's suppose we were looking at this one where we had to work out the probability of z being between zero and one point two. Now again, knowing this particular result here, for instance, we could work this one out. We know that to the left of zero, that's going to be 0 0.5. So I could just take away 0 0.5 from 0 0.88493. But using the Q function, it will give us the answer as well. This is the same as Q then of 1.2. And to make this function work on your calculator, all we've got to do is select the statistics function here, shift one, then go back into the distribution here, five, select two, and now just enter 1.2. So if we enter 1.2, close the bracket, press equals 0.38493. Okay, so this is equal then to 0.38493. Four, nine, three. And you can see then that if you take 0 0.5 away from 0 0.88493, that's that area to the left of this line here, you're going to get this value. One more example now, just to illustrate this one. Suppose we wanted to find the probability then of Z being greater than 1.2. Then Again, if I've got these answers up here, you can see by symmetry here, it's going to be the same answer as what we've got here, 0 0.11507. But I'll show you how it works anyway, just in case you haven't got a previous answer up here. So all we need to do is just step back to the stats mode, okay, look at 5 and select number three here and then enter 1.2 and what we get when we press equals is 0 0.11507 so you can see then that this is equal to and if we use that function it's r of 1.2 and we get then 0 0.11507 so I hope that's given you some idea anyway how you can use this particular calculator to work out these probabilities then from the standard normal distribution.